not needing to be the only one who knows. Knowing, just for the sake of knowing, whether it's claircognizant, clairvoyant, whatever goes on in realms that may not be accessed by the physical eyes, the physical sensory system. Becoming less attached to the physical world instead to see clearly even if it means sacrificing some of the comforts, creature comforts. Now moving into the whole top of the head for relief. Feeling the desire for relief, to not have to work, to not have to tell anybody what to do, no responsibility, to not feel pain, not feel tension, not have to carry the load. A very comforting, blissful state of relief. We're going to work through the body system one more time. Um, again, for the desire for, um, you know, the sephiras, we're using the 11 dimensions um, for the sake of bonding. But we're going to start with the relief now. We're going to have relief come in for all the different areas. Um, we worked with desire for the entire body, all the different aspects. And we also worked with... Um, longing. In other words, we own the fact that we have longings and where we belong is often an indication of what we're longing for. So we're going to be okay with that, at least just for today. So the rest of them that we're going to do now is um, to, to work a little more with the chakra system. So purity um, in all of these. So we worked with the 11 parts of the body, just the 11 dimensions of the physical or emotional or spiritual body, whatever you connect with. And um, we're going to start with the relief that the crown itself wants relief, and that is to be um, purity in the desire. So in Hebrew we say yetzer, to come out or to create or idea, to form, information. So all these parts of our desires have agendas, have results oriented for where we want to end up what we'd like to come out of, the participations and the investments we make. So for us to become comfortable with our desires, they also, for us, we need to know that they're not, there's two ways to get them. One is an honest way with trust without trying to overpower. For example, relaxation is really nice after a good exercise. But to try to relax when we're supposed to be helping somebody or we gave our word or we have a commitment is a, mis, a misguided desire. The desire to relax might be, in that case, we just need a different way of relating to somebody. How to say what we need, how to ask for, you know, a little bit of an extension on the time. So when we practice purifying our desires, we don't shame ourselves out of satisfaction. Um, we don't shame ourselves out of the longing. Instead, we say to ourselves, where can I purify this desire? Where can I find the ability to manifest this? Because I'm whole, oneness. So the desire for any of these, you have to have the whole desire. You can't on the one side say I desire, you know, genera to be to be generous and, and to both receive generosity and give generosity, but I myself would rather stay stingy because it's hard for me to give a few dollars to, you know, charity. Um, or to help somebody, you know, do the errand for them because time is money. And so, you know, the, that division means that we end up feeling a sense of dissatisfaction because our desire is not being fulfilled for generosity, whether it's us doing it or others. Um, our longing, we don't feel we belong and um, we don't feel pure because that consciousness knows that there's a division and one of them is not true. And our desire itself remains unfulfilled and this makes it difficult to try in life to word that which we get you know inner messages that we should head to so this is very important work um, not to deny the desires and to be like an animal saying I don't have any desires and I'm fine with everything but then a lot of this is, becomes like ankle weights I'm just trying to like do well and then we're weighed down by these heavy heavy ankle weights it could even be calf weights it could be a massive you know heavy baggage all strapped to our legs and we're pretending that we're totally fine and we're sort of like kicking it behind us like nobody could see so you know soothing this is how do we bond with ourselves? we become one 
So these peels coming off, I want everybody to first, before we go into the chakra systems, just releasing the skin and the layers of the skin, the hairs on the skin. So this is both feet, the calves, the legs, the thighs, hips, the groin, the front of the, of the torso, the back of the torso, left, right, the armpits, the shoulders, the whole upper arms. Now we're going to go in between the fingers. We're going to use the elbows to the wrists and then pinky finger right side between the finger, second finger. Second finger between the finger, third finger. Third finger between the finger, fourth finger, pointer finger. And then between pointer and thumb and then thumb. Other hand, first the pinky finger between and then second finger. Second finger between third finger. Third finger between fourth finger. Fourth finger between thumb. Whole palms, whole back of the hands, whole then back up wrist to elbow to shoulder. Neck, all the strings of the neck like we're a puppet. Our head is being turned in all directions, just letting that all go. Letting the iris of the eye. The fact that there's two parts of the eye, one part penetrates, it's sharp focus, the fovea and the macula, and then this side area peripheral. So we peel off these, these layers, all these layers. What we're standing on, you know, appears very real, the floor, we jump up, we always come back down, we're so used to it, we're used to the magnet. And now moving into our root. And this is where we have so much loyalty to our feet for carrying us all that weight that we usually disregard and push down, push down, push down all our desires we don't want to own, our secret agendas. We push them down into our feet and they carry it for us and we collapse in the ankles and we don't feel we can stand on our own two feet anymore. We're in such division, which leg and comp competition inside ourselves results outside. So we're letting go of corruption of all the places we've walked and all the people we've tried to be and all the things we've tried to provide in order to really just to get what we want. And we let that all go. We let corruption go from the feet all the way to the crotch, literally the whole legs, like a mermaid tail, like a sperm's flagella, this one big unit movement body, this whole movement body of the bottom, the root into the earth that bends and, and, and flies and rather is always still connected. And then we move into the actual pelvis itself and here we find modesty we let go of needing to show off or be recognized and realize that something precious never hides out that's like goes against the preciousness by nature something precious has a safe place to be protected and we feel that sense of having always been protected since we've been born moving up a little bit to like the side of the umbilical cord and where we eat at first from our mother, our energy center, our desires are often here where we become aware of them. So here we go into shame, shame for wanting to eat more than we can digest and having to go to the bathroom a bunch is the earliest parts of our childhood that start shame. We ate too much, you know, we poop too much and it smells and Letting go of all shame, letting go of being a half-finished human, letting go of having pain means, oh, am I not worthy of, of knowing anything? Because if I knew, I wouldn't have my, my own pain, I wouldn't have my own issues. You know, So letting go of those shames, shames about being a human, shames about not having all the answers or being in control, shame at trying so hard to get businesses started or projects and they never really panned out. Shame at being, you know, in some way physically different in appearance. I'm going to say my hair and my body. Um, shame at my armpits. Shame at having been someone who got so many tattoos. Shame at any misalignments physically. Now moving into the heart space. And this is greed. Greed is I want more, I want to take in. And this is when we're in pain, we learn how to repress. We say, I need more energy versus letting the energy flow. It's a radiation energy. So the heart itself is not greedy. So letting go of greed, letting go of the sense of scarcity, not enough, and recognizing that not enough also could feel like innocence, could feel like just the connection. There's not enough connection. I'm not connected to myself or others. I'm only showing certain parts. Just letting go of the greed of needing everyone's attention to make me feel better. Letting go of the greed of everybody out there needing to like what I do, the approval. Letting go of greed, just letting people be themselves and love them, whether they do what we want or not. 
and starting to radiate that out, taking a really deep breath into the space of whatever may be getting it stuck in the greed. And letting it go, exhaling fully. Feeling humbled by all those who may have been more awake than us or conscious at times where we were greedy for their, for their listening, even though they were teaching us and even when they were listening, they were giving. So we were greedy even during parts of while we felt we were so spiritual and so great. Um, and now moving into the throat chakra for comfort, finding comfort from anxiety, from feeling unheard, feeling, recognizing that sometimes hearing someone else say what we need to say and actually learning how to listen and hearing what people really mean underneath what they're saying. They may use different words. Finding a comfort in the silence, finding comfort in not needing to fill the void or needing to be understood or needing to take up space. Softening the neck and breathing for a moment out of the whole thoracic rib. So breathing like... Letting the neck be soft. Enjoying some comfort. And now we move into like the third eye center. You may want to touch here just a little to bring some softness here. And relax the front of your head. Relax the inside of your head. Go right to the middle of your head. And now we just open up to patience. More will be revealed. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for the eyes to adjust to the dark. It could take a few weeks for the seasonal changes to occur. Spring started, but we had a lot of rain and coldness. And patience is required to see the sunlight. You might have woken up too early and then you have to wait. You could put on the light, but you have to wait for the day to start. So this patience of cycles, patience of cycles is naturally built into this part of our head, we have certain cells that are part of the natural circadian rhythm. It's called a black substance, substantia nigra. As far as I can remember. <laughs> Maybe some other area. I mean, it may be this area by another name, but I believe it's called substantia nigra. And it releases cells that help us. And even when we yawn, it measures the oxygen. So trusting this middle part of our head is taking care of cycles and we don't need to worry so much about when things are coming. We need to practice patience for our own self so we can be comfortable because what we practice grows stronger. We just moved from comfort. That means we won't get out what we need to say or you know, we won't we won't be able to um, you know, catch our breath in this way, like we may be gulping like without even realizing it and it could cause a lot of tightness here. So instead of trying to like squeeze in we're just finding an openness and letting that you know even come from the heart all the way up and that's where we find this patience now in our crown in our crown chakra now we come into a sense of bonding soothing for god for the cosmos for our ancestors bringing that here bringing that ancestors are rooting for us the cosmos are rooting for us, we're made out of the materials, and God, whatever created us, whoever counts the stars, whoever counts the sheep, we belong, we belong, and our longings, our yearnings are here for a reason, and becoming whole with that whole element of us that may not have always the easiest way of finding words. And letting this work be a prayer, being chosen, being earned, Focusing on, on our self, not the other people around us, is our higher self. Taking good care of us. Maybe saying some affirmations to ourself now. Focus on me, not anyone else. It'll be so easy to focus on others when I'm feeling satisfied with myself and I am happy. If I stop having such high standards for reaching happiness, I'll be happy no matter who's around, no matter what's going on. I belong to me. Now telling herself, I will earn your trust. I will earn your unconditional love. I will earn your warmth. I will earn your affection. 
your natural state is to be warm and affectionate, unconditionally loving and trusting. I see your devotion and your loyalty. I will always be there for you, comforting you, keeping you safe. And as we join together with these aspects, we say, I am desirable. I am infinitely valuable, innately precious. I am ready to create connection. I can trust my contributions. It's possible for me to advertise myself. I am worth effort. I'm ready to express myself. I can have fun sharing my gifts. I can enjoy being a soothing witness. In 10 areas in which you may find some openings now because of this, I'm gonna list them here. And whatever really stands to you, that's your word that you can hold on to for a while and realize you have much more of that to give than you realize. So whichever feels fresh and new for you, recognition, privacy, excitement, freedom to dance, credit, payment, investment, voice heard, security, appreciation. And sometimes we realize we've kind of abused and used this this fleshy one who goes out and does takes care of everything for us and tells people what we need and writes down lists and, and buys the stuff. And so there's something called reparations and um, it could be necessary. So I wrote a little poem to myself as a way of showing my understanding of how in denying my desires, I've really hurt myself and I haven't even helped anybody because of it. I learned so much on the way. However, my prayer for everyone is to make reparations to their self for wholeness, for oneness. I'm going to read the poem. The choice to hurt anyway. I'm sorry for being human. You're so soft and sensitive. Your face dropped. Saving face. There's so much beauty, exquisite, shapes of glitter. Frowning in fur and velvet. The artist we are, skin. Thanks for listening. Where do we go from here? The magnet tells us how. Is it worth it to try again? How many sequins and strokes? Maybe it's about time. Time to space, into time. About time to be about time. The humor that clicks me. Alignment, a belly laugh memory. Earth core as a mothership. We can't twist the fluidity. It's a womb eagerly preserving the moon saves to dwell with the sun. Shining full or slit, it calls. Ray upon ray, I feel your choice. So as an act of self-love, perhaps writing a poem or a note to yourself that communicates a sense of openness and wonder about your desires and choosing the word that stands out most to you where there's room for healing and growth. My desire to be excited about life. For me, that's the word that stuck out, my excitement. I can find freshness in my excitement, my desire to be excited. So natural. Blessing you, have a wonderful day.